Hey guys, what is up? Hope you all have been having a great week. Happy to be back with my 30,000 subscriber special video featuring all 18 holes at Whistling Straits. Before I get started, I just want to thank you guys for all the support you've given me and for subscribing to the channel. I've only been doing YouTube for three months and it's crazy to think that we're already at 30,000 subscribers. For each 10,000 benchmark all the way up to 100k, I'll do a special 18 hole video at a very prestigious course, with the next benchmark being 40,000. So if you want more special 18 hole episodes like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And with that being said, let's hop into it. So first off, I want to thank Whistling Straits for having me out. This was, I mean, and you guys will obviously see how the course looks in the video, but this was one of the most beautiful courses I've ever played in. I, I would honestly say it was probably the hardest course I've ever played in my life. I played it all the way back at, I think, 7,900 yards. They gave me special permission to tip it out. And it just so happened that they had the Sunday hole locations for the majors. I don't know if they were the exact ones, but I was told they were the most difficult they could have had on average. So I, my goal with this round was to break 80. If I could break 80, I would have been ecstatic. So that's kind of the target here because the course rating was like, I think, 78, something like that. And that doesn't account for the wind and all that good stuff. So it was definitely a great test of golf. And I also want to give a shout out to um, my caddy. I'll put his contact information in the description. He did a fantastic job of helping me out with reads and the course and all that good stuff. You'll, you'll notice I'll probably make a lot more putts in this round, hit a lot better putts. And I was actually pretty shocked because I did not realize how much difference a caddy made in your round. And he definitely did a great job. And he was good to have some company on the course. And um, for those of you curious, basically he carried the bag. And I more or less carried the camera and the trackman around for 18 holes. And it was like an 8 or 9 mile walk. But it was definitely still really cool. My, form, my uh, arm was getting a little tired towards the end. But... I know you guys like the trackman numbers, so I figured I was definitely going to bring the trackman along. And I, I was really, one of the things I kept thinking about was just how beautiful every shot seemed with the backdrop of the place that this course is built on. I believe that's Lake Michigan in the background there. I'm about 90% sure it's Lake Michigan. So it was, I think, eight or nine holes run alongside it. And the most brutal stretch of golf I've ever played was on this course, holes 5 through 13. We were playing in about a 25-mile-an-hour wind, and those holes, every single one of them, was straight back into the wind. And it was like being punched over and over by Mike Tyson. Every single hole was just brutal. So stay tuned for that because it'll be a lot of fun. And also, I did get a 400-yard carry with one of my drives on this round, so stay tuned for that as well. So there's a lot of fireworks that went on this round, so I'm... Really excited to bring you guys this. It was definitely a ton of fun. So now in the third hole, pretty good start, even par for two. And the pin you can see is kind of tucked in that. You got a, it's a really tough pin because there's a knoll on the green, it's a big false front. And if you land it short of that, it'll spin back off the green. And I landed it right on top of it and it just got over. And this almost went in. So I, I was watching this roll towards the hole. And I, you can see the knoll right there, and it landed right on top of that and just started trickling down. Obviously, it didn't, like, lip out or anything, but from my vantage point, that literally looked like, you can see where it landed, where it rolled, that literally looked like it was right on top of the hole. So I was kind of holding my breath, waiting for the ball to disappear all of a sudden. Because that would have been quite, that would have been something if I was able to actually make a hole in one on one of these vlogs. And maybe I will, who knows. So really good putt there, knocking it in for a birdie. You get to one under after three holes, which is, <laughs> I was pretty pumped at that start. I didn't think I would be getting to red numbers at any point during this round. So hole four, 494 yards, part four. Hit a pretty good drive. I thought this was going to carry that last bunker on the left. And I, I carried it pretty far, just a little bit short. So kind of got hung up in that rough up there. It, it landed above the high grass and kind of kicked down. So I got a bit of a bad lie there. I guess not, well, I have a bad lie, but it was more of a bad break, I guess you could say. So, still an okay position. I can definitely get some club on it, but you can see how brutal that rough is. And it was a bit downwind, so I really had very little chance of stopping this on the green. I was just trying to get it over the green or to the, to the right of the green. That's what my caddy said. He literally told me, just aim at the right edge of the screen and try to put it, pretty much where I put it there, and it'll be an easy chip. And it was. Got a pretty good lie, and pretty much put it to kick-in range, so I'll clean that one up for a par, 
and played some great golf right now. It was really going well, and now in hole five, par five, 603 yards, and I was trying to keep it left of this pond, hitting a two iron off the tee, and yeah, my first <laughs> iron shot, and uh, I was hoping it would hang on a little bit, but I put her into the into the drink, so I ended up having to take a drop short of the water, and so I basically had to carry all over the water, and you'll see there's some bunkers just to the right of my shoulders, so I was trying to carry it over those bunkers back on the fairway, hit a really great shot, I was able to get it over the bunkers and back into a good spot, so I'm still okay on this hole, and that's really what it is, I, I know that you know, things are going to happen this round. Because when you play a course like this, you, you know that's going to happen. It's going to get you at some point. So you got to be more prepared to just kind of take the punches gracefully and keep going versus trying to somehow block the punches or avoid them. That's that's really, when you play a course like this, that's really your only option. Because Pete Dye doesn't mess around. Who, by the way, he's the course architect, if you don't already know. So got about 30 footer for par. It was pretty aggressive on this putt and thought it had a chance at first. And once again, my caddy was awesome with the reads. I really, what you what you guys will notice a lot is I, I might have had maybe two putts outside of 15 feet that didn't really have a chance. Every single other putt, I would say, was a really, really good putt. And I either missed it because I hit a bad stroke, or I, mean, or, well, I pulled it a little bit or something, or I just didn't hit it far enough or got a bad, bad speed on it. So now this was where it got brutal. Like, it was dead into the fan. So I believe that club speed is probably a bit of a mystery. This is probably only about 137 club speed, but I caught it in the heel, so sometimes the track can spit out a high number. Because I don't know if you guys noticed, but what you will notice for the next four or five holes is that when I take driver, I'm almost choking down on it a little bit and hitting a bit of a knockdown cut. Because I'm just trying to do everything I can to get this ball back on the ground as soon as possible. Because, I mean, it is blowing out there right now. And so I hit a pretty good wedge shot in here. I hit like a 50 degree wedge and knocked it down big time it still got a lot of air but really really d did well to get it to this point so now we have a look at birdie looks like we got about a 30 footer and I'm just gonna make a good roll stroke on it pulled it a little bit and that's why i missed it left it will come back a little bit and so got a nice little kick in par and <laughs> as long as i get kick in pars i'm happy so still have to really get started one over through through six is really good. And this was, I mean, you can see where I'm gripping on the club. I am doing everything I can to get this on the ground as quick as possible. Because the wind blows out from Michigan, so it was a slight wind from the right, but mostly just a headwind. And I completely lost this. It just flew up into the wind, and the wind just took it. That was a completely neutral spin axis. I looked at my track, meaning that the shot would have been completely straight, but the wind pulled it that much. This probably would have been right on top of the target if there wasn't any wind and so now I'm just trying to play it out left and let the green kick it down and it got hung up this was so close to being a great shot but unfortunately got hung up in that rough and so now you can really see why this course is considered one of the hardest in the world <laughs> I was actually starting to think hey you know I'm, I'm, I'm I got this this ain't this ain't no problem and then the then we switched back into the wind and that was when it got real so now got a putt for a four just trying to do some damage control at this point make a good stroke and that's what I did rolled it right in there so another solid putt I, I think I had less than 30 putts in this round I'm not sure it was right around 30 which for me is awesome so now another 500 plus yard par four again you'll notice I'm kind of hitting a bit of a knockdown cut and uh, it was actually kind of straight but you'll see the ball speed and club speed are a bit down I'm because I'm just doing everything I can to just keep this ball in between the fescue just somehow get it in the a playable range and so I have a really awkward stance here and just try to hit it out and just scoot it up that was really all I was trying to do and just kind of run into one of those bunkers and I thought I had a good shot but unfortunately it went into one of the bunkers short. I was trying to get in that far bunker not this one and I had a brutal lie like I I don't even know if you guys can see the ball but like I had really a really weird uh just stance and everything <laughs> and this one isn't much better <laughs> So you can, yeah, now you guys are really starting to realize why, like, why this course holds majors. But it, it was tons of fun, though. I really love playing these courses. I know it's not your local Muni where you can go and beat it up and shoot a 66 or 67, but I think playing hard golf was really a lot more fun than playing easy golf. I think that's how the game is meant to be played. 
I think if you don't feel like you've been beaten up a little bit out there, you really didn't play golf very much. You didn't really play golf the way it should be played. So I always love playing extremely tough courses like these. And hit a good putt here, just a little bit high. So double bogey. So two double bogeys in the last four holes, I think, unfortunately. So now on hole nine, four over, and trying to blast the driver. A really great drive. And you can see the clubhouse out in the distance there, too. I was trying to fit it down in that last little gap in that fairway, and I got a horrible break. You'll see coming up here, it literally caught the last knoll. If it would have landed three yards to the right, it would have kicked down to the uh, center of the fairway. So I've definitely had a rough go at it in the last probably 45 minutes to an hour. So now i got another really, really tough lie. I'm just trying to somehow gauge how this ball is going to come out. And this thing came out so much hotter than I thought it would come out. I mean, this thing came out flying. So, judging by the lie, I did not think that I would be able to get the kind of gas on this I got. So, it was rolling forever. It landed, like, short of the green, and it rolled, like, 100 feet and off the back edge. So, now I have a really, really tricky two-putt to get in at 40. But once again, my, my caddy's really been good with the reads. and So, I, I don't know how much of it had to do with the reads and how much of it had to do with this, having more confidence over the ball. I think I, I think it was a little bit of both. I just felt a lot more relaxed because I feel I think I felt like if I made a good stroke, the ball was going to go in, and so it kind of makes you a little more at ease when you're hit, when you're hitting your putts. So another really good par save there. So I made the turn to forty, which I mean that I'm really happy with. And now to hold ten, three hundred ninety-one yards, a little bit of a par four. Pulled this one a bit, and so I'm, I'm just hoping it kind of flights a little bit, a straight as straighter than I think it might. So that I'll be I'll be okay, and I was okay, because the ref down here, it looks bad, but it actually wasn't that bad. It was pretty easy to find this ball. We really didn't have to look for more than like 30 seconds, once we figured. Because the one great thing about having the track man is it tells you the carry distance, so that can really help out with kind of gauging where the ball should be in the rough. So you can kind of narrow your search, and that makes it a lot easier to find golf balls and, and whatnot. So that helped us kind of move along pretty well throughout the round. And so now my third shot got hung, hung up in the rough a bit. If I carried maybe another foot or two, it would have been much closer, but it didn't. And so I have about a 15, 18 footer to save par here. And was a little weak on it. So now I'm five over through 10. Still, I, I got to be honest, I'm still not very upset at all with how I'm playing, especially with how I'm scoring. And here's a cool little angle here 645 yard par five. And that's what 140 club speed looks like from the side. I thought I would show from a side view because it was exactly 140. And I know a lot of people are always curious about what 140 looks like from the side. So there you go. And now 286 yards left, the two iron. I mean, I was kind of trying to get it there, but my biggest objective was just to scoot it up as far as I could because it was a bit of a headwind. So I didn't really think I could get it there. And I was a little short, but and also a little bit left. And, uh, but I was in terrible, terrible shape here. I know I'm in a bit of high grass here, but had a pretty good lie, so I could kind of be pretty aggressive with the shot. And the wind was in my face, so that acted as a, a pretty nice backstop. And I don't know if it's just I was so used to worse to, to, to high grass that this didn't, this lie didn't seem that bad. I mean, looking at it from the camera view, it looks like it was pretty bad. But you know, I've been really grinding pretty much the last two and a half hours, so I don't really think it registered too much on what I was doing. And now we got a putt for birdie. And this looked good, and you could see we're kind of giving it in the eye, and it just kind of snapped left. And so, got about maybe a three and a half, four footer left, and I'm just gonna roll this one in. So, pretty good par, all things considered. I mean, 645 yard par five into the wind, yeah. Now, look where this pin is, guys. This was a 25 mile an hour headwind, and I mean, to me, this was the most absurd pin location I've ever seen in my life. But it was fun. I mean, this was, a, I literally. My caddy said, don't even look at the pin. He said, try to put in the front edge of the green, and if, you, if, that, if you're lucky, you'll have a putt towards the hole. And yes, if I'm lucky, I'll have a putt towards the hole. You'll see what I mean in a second. Just take a look where this pin is. So that's where I landed right there. And, I mean, <laughs> just look where that pin is. I mean, to me, that's insane. And I was a little bit too long, but I still felt like I could probably get it close I hit it hard enough through that first collar of rough, so I was going to go for it. And it just got a little bit onto that that first cut, and so it was a little slow coming out. 
I maybe would have put that a foot further out to the right. It probably would have been a little bit closer, but I don't really see how I could have gotten it really close unless I chipped it. And there was no way I was chipping on these greens. I don't care how – the only way I would have chipped on these greens is if I was playing in some kind of big-time tournament and I had to do it. Like, these greens are too pristine for me to fudge it up with a wedge, so I was just going to try to putt it out right. So, honestly, I made a four. It was a bogey, but I can't really say I'm upset with it. <laughs> Because that, that was one of the most insane pin locations I've ever encountered in my life. The only way you're going to make a putt there is if you put it literally on the front edge of the green. And if you put it on the front edge of the green, if you hit it at the pin, at that distance, it's going to go in the water. So you really have no place to go. So now I was switching down my two iron because it's starting to get pretty cold. And I just didn't really feel too confident in my driver at that point. And the wind was really starting to switch back into me. So I was starting to just go with the two iron and keep it in play. And this is a brutal lie, like... And I, I took less. My caddy told me to take a shorter club than I thought I needed because the green really bottlenecks as you get up there. So he almost said that I should kind of make this a pseudo layup, and that's kind of what I did. And this this bunker shot came out really thick, and so I left myself a really long putt for par here. So, and it, as I said earlier in the video, I, I I knew this would happen at some point. I knew I'd be able to play well for at least a good majority of the round. But there would be stretches where it would just beat me up. And, you know, it is what it is. And hit another great putt. Just slid by the right side. And so I knocked it in. And uh, now I'm in hole 14, 7 over. Par 4, 396 yards with a 2 iron. Once again, just trying to keep it in play. A really, really good shot here. Blood out to the right just a bit. But as long as it stay, it's not going into the high grass, I'm happy. <laughs> so... That was a. I honestly feel like I should have probably hit two irons a little more earlier in the round, but I also know at the same time you guys want me to hit driver, and this is the thirty thousand subscriber special. So, I mean, I'm gonna make sure that you guys are entertained as well. So, so now only a live wedge in, and you know this was really it was way downwind. I landed this on the front edge of the green, and it rolled to like the back center part of the green with a lob wedge. So yeah, it was getting tough to hold the greens. I think they were starting to bake out pretty good. And, but I do have a putt for birdie, which is awesome. So I have a chance to get back to six over. Just make a good roll at this. It's starting to come in again. And, <sighs> yeah, you, you can see we, we really wanted a big one to fall. Um, his, his, he was really on the money with the reeds, and I was making good putts. They just weren't falling, at least early on. And now sign up for this one. You're going to want to see this. So that was a 401 yard carry. It, it, the wind switched down, and I launched this thing. And this was, I don't know if, how many guys are familiar with this particular hole. I believe this is like the second longest part four. So you'll be able to see what? where I ended up from yeah, the tips here. Yeah. Um, you can see me walking. I'm just short of that bunker on the, on the center of the fairway. And so all I have is 92 yards left. This ended up rolling out to like 415, 420, I think. So I really did want to hit a 400 yard drive at this course, so I was very happy that that happened. So it, it obviously makes this hole a lot easier, even though this was still a tough hole from the approach shot. I mean, with the being downwind, this is going to be a hard green. This was going to be a hard green to hold. And so left it a bit short. I was a bit timid on that because I didn't want it to go over the pin, but still a very, very makeable birdie from this position, especially on this hole. And again, another good putt. You know, just a little bit light on the read there, but that was a all around great four. And now in hole 16, still 7 over. Part 5, 568 yards. Really have a great opportunity to get one back here. Let this one out a little bit to the right, but it was coming back in. And another bomb, 376 yards of carry. So I was enjoying this part of the round where we were going back downwind. Because for, for those of you who don't know, the Whistling Straits kind of runs in a figure 8. So essentially, you're going to have a long stretch of holes that runs into the wind, then you're going to have a long stretch of holes that runs downwind. So it's a pretty unique way to play a golf course. And here I had a really tough lie. So I was kind of going for the green, but I set myself up where I would miss to the right if I, if I missed it, and I did. So really great leave. Only 62 yards left. Just a little flip wedge here. And... The great thing about the fairways, as were Firestones, is that they were very well manicured, so I felt very comfortable with my wedges, and I felt like I could, as long as I was hitting from the fairway, which I didn't do too much from this round, but if I was hitting from the fairway, I felt pretty confident that I could control the shot pretty well, despite the wind. 
you can see here, finally knocked one pretty close. And yeah, you can see how beautiful that landscape is out there. Figured I would show you guys some shots coming into the clubhouse. And it finished up my round. So now we got about a six or seven footer. And as you can see by the flag, the wind still has not let up. And so I'm just going to make a good roll and caught the edge. And so we're back to six over. So that was great. And so I've been hanging in there all day. You know, I really haven't. I haven't made any huge mistakes. I made some, but not any huge ones. And now on hole 17, it's sound up. So this was 240 yards. I hit a nine iron. And the primary reason I did that, it was way downwind. It was also downhill. And I just didn't want to lose control of the ball. So I wanted to hit a club that I knew would be in the front center part of the green. And then you could see Lake Michigan again there. Pretty amazing view. That's definitely worth the price of admission. And so you can see how close I came to going over the edge. And there's, it's not as, the edge wasn't as bad as I thought, actually. It's just a bunker. It wasn't like a cliff or anything. So it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but it, it definitely made the shot easier by staying up on the edge. So I got it. This was actually a really tough chip because there's a huge mound. I really had to fly it to get it close. And unfortunately, I left it a bit short. So if you'll see there, it's kind of sliding away from the hole. So, yeah, there was just no let up in this course whatsoever. I mean, there were a few holes you could kind of, you know, maybe chill out a bit. But there there was no hole where you could say, all right, I can let my guard down and I'm, I'll be all right. It was just tough hole after tough hole. But that's that's championship golf. That's what you get. So, gave that shot right back. And now in hole 18, seven over, 420, 520 yards rather. Hitting two iron off the tee. Just trying to get in the play. Hit a really great tee shot here. Pretty much perfect. 277 yards of carry. I think this probably rolled out to like 300 yards or something close to that. And um, so that was a great tee shot. Now 225 yards left, hitting an 8 iron in. I know it's tough to see the green, but it's right under that clubhouse. And the pin's on the right edge. Like every one of these pin locations was just brutal. And so I put it in the center. Absolutely perfect shot. And uh, really played this hole perfectly so far. And um, you'll see kind of the last little view of the course. And, um, yeah, it's just absolutely amazing. And you can see the pitch mark right there and the ball running out. I didn't quite get it onto this knoll right there. And so that was a little unfortunate. But I still have a putt for it. And when you have a 520-yard par 4 with trouble everywhere in a really difficult pin location, pretty much all you can ask for is to have a putt for it. So made a pretty good stroke, actually. Just... Didn't quite give it the gas it needed. And so I have about two and a half feet, maybe three feet left here to clean up a par. And I will knock that one in. So I shot, ended up shooting a seven over, 79, which I'm super pumped about. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.